Hi and welcome to Puzzle Pieces. In each episode I take a look at a different sort of puzzle, explain how it works and demonstrate how to solve it. And in this video I want to take a look at a logic puzzle, um, also sometimes called a zebra puzzle or an Einstein puzzle, that appears in the game Paradox of the Cryptomancers. So, as we step out the doors, the first thing we notice is a hex grid on the floor and there's a river flowing through the level and a number of coloured balls. Now each of these coloured balls is in front of a plaque. So the purple ball here says the hermit lives next to the lake and has no neighbours. Okay, let's take a look at the red ball. Uh, the basilisk and the tiger are neighbours. And then we have two green plaques behind the green ball. So the mountain is three or more spaces away from water and also the mountain is directly between the basilisk and the golem. Okay, we've got the yellow ball, that's the tiger, is surrounded on four sides by water. Now we have a blue ball that has no plaque, um, but we did see a river in the middle of the level, so perhaps the blue ball represents a portable water like the lake. And the golem and the basilisk live on the same side of the river. Uh, we have one final ball here which says the merchant is no more than two spaces from anyone. So this is a, a constraint satisfaction problem and when you do a puzzle like this the best thing to do is start with the object that has the most constraints. So if we take the hermit to start with, uh, that lives next to the lake and has no neighbours. So we'll put that on the edge as that seems to be the, the easiest place for it to not have any neighbours. Now we'll assume that this blue ball here then must be the lake. And so we'll pick that up and we'll move that to be next to the hermit. And then that satisfies the conditions for the first ball we've placed. Now, having put the lake in position, it says the tiger is surrounded on four sides by water. And the river only touches three uh, sides of any of the hex cells. So if the tiger is to be surrounded on four sides by water, it too must be next to the lake. So we'll pop that there. Uh, having put the tiger in position, we now know that the basilisk and the tiger are neighbours, so we'll go and take the basilisk, which is the red ball, and we'll place that here. Uh, so we'll just put that down there. Okay, now let's see what we've got remaining. We have the mountain, and we also have the golem and we also have the merchant. Now the merchant is no more than two spaces from anyone. So if we pick up the merchant and place him so that he is no more than two spaces away from the pieces that we've placed already. Now we'll go and look for the mountain. Now the mountain must be three or more spaces away from water but also must be closer than two to the merchant. Uh, which would place him there. And the other condition was that the mountain must go between the basilisk and the golem. So having placed the mountain there. And there we go, so that's the solution to the puzzle. That meets all the constraints of all of the different objects and we go and we'll see that it says congratulations, floor 2 is now unlocked. And we also notice that there's a painting here, this is Ada Loveless. Uh, now the lobby floor had a picture of Tolstoy, so that might be interesting. We'll note that down in case there's a meta puzzle that uses that later. And we'll just call the lift again. So this is a, a nice way of um, implementing, again, what is a fairly common logic puzzle. It's um, just going down a list of objects. You might have seen them um, used who lives in what house. So Mr. Green drinks tea, um, Mr. Brown has a zebra, and Mrs. White and Miss Pink don't live next to each other. Um, you know, who reads the Times newspaper or something like that. Um, so long as you have enough conditions, enough information to be able to place all the different objects it is possible to solve. What's quite nice about the implementation here is that we're looking at obviously not actual physical objects but representations of 3D physical objects that can be moved 
Um, and there's also a little bit of an abstraction layer because we're talking about the tiger and the mountain and the basilisk, um, which are only represented by coloured spheres. But I think you naturally think of the tiger being the yellow one, the mountain as the green one, the lake as the blue one, etc. So it kind of uses some assumptions that players will already have in terms of assigning colours to objects. And it also uses a familiar puzzle mechanic, which is the, the logic puzzle that satisfies the constraints, but it kind of wraps them up in a, in a new way. That's, that's a nice little puzzle.